The Pet Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly, transcribed with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Vic LeGrand, Ken Christie, Peggy Weber, Gil Stratton Jr., Tyler McVeigh, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. In most families, morning's a pretty hectic time with breakfast to fix, husband and youngsters to get off to work and to school. And when the house is quieted down again, that's when you really enjoy a good cup of coffee. And morning after morning, you'll enjoy that coffee more when you use pet evaporated milk instead of cream. You see, pet milk is good, sweet country milk with more than half the water removed. So it's just the right consistency for coffee. No doubt about it, pet milk gives coffee the creamy color and fine, mellow flavor most folks like best. But there are two things pet milk does not do that are important, too. One, pet milk doesn't add to coffee the number of fattening calories cream does. And two, pet milk doesn't cost nearly as much as cream. In fact, it costs less than half as much. If you're still using expensive cream in coffee, how about switching to pet milk? Once you try it, you'll know why millions of coffee lovers who used to use cream now use pet evaporated milk. Well, here's a typical breakfast table trio, Mr. McGee, Mrs. McGee, and the Wistful Vista Gazette. The uh, head of the household is reading the news, while her husband is busy eating. (laughs) As we join, Fibber McGee and Molly. Pass the biscuits, Molly. What's in the morning paper that you can read without getting upset? Anything? Well, now, here's an interesting headline. Mm-hmm. It says, lower income taxes. Yeah? Impossible, says Senator. Oh. <laughs> Skip the biscuits. I just lost my appetite. Oh, here's a funny one, McGee. You know the new highway they're working on? Yeah. It says they were clearing away the brush out there yesterday, and they found an old abandoned statue all overgrown with undergrowth. <laughs> well... People throw away that uh, statue. Where? Whereabouts? They find it. Where? Oh, out past the end of Oak Street. There's a picture of it right here. Uh huh. Let me see that. Let me see that. Oh my gosh. That's him, Molly. They found the statue of Uncle Buckshot McGee. <laughs> yeah. I was the only guy that knew it was there. Ah, oh, just look at him, Molly. Good old Uncle Buckshot. Who is he? Or was he? Who is he or was he? What? <laughs> my gosh, Molly, Uncle Buckshot McGee was the greatest hero in the entire history of my family. That's a very modest claim. Ah, yeah, uh, my folks had a million stories about old Uncle Buck. Any of them true? I never asked. <laughs> he done everything Uncle Buck did. He was an Indian scout and a buffalo hunter. He fought in the Civil War. He hunted gold in the gold rush. Really? In California? Right. They say that when Uncle Buck went out there in 1849, all he owned in the world was 50 cents and a case of hay fever. (laughs) But when he came back four years later, he had entirely got rid of the 50 cents. Well, he sounds like a fascinating figure, all right. Yep, I found that statue last fall, Molly. I kept it quiet because I've been saving it to donate it to the city this summer when we have Pioneer Day, see? I figure they can move it to the city hall lawn. Say, that's a wonderful idea, (laughs) McGee. This is exciting. Well, I'll say it is. It ain't everybody that has a statue of an ancestor of his that he was one of the greatest pioneers anybody ever saw sitting on the city hall lawn. (laughs) Why, when the trivia hears about Uncle Buckshot McGee, hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the city hall. Mayor Latrivia's office at you, Mert? Oh, dear. How's every little thing, Mert? (laughs) Is, eh? What say, Mert? Your brother. Out at Dugan's Lake, diving for pearls. What's he going to do, make a necklace? No, no, Mert and her sister dropped their purses off the dock. They found Mert's and brought it up, but they're still diving for pearls. (laughs) What's that, Mert? Oh, okay. The trivia's phone's busy. Grab your hat. Let's go down to the city hall. Good. Come on, let's go down. So, 
handle the trivia. On behalf of the great pioneer family of McGee, I'm going to donate to the city of Wistful Vista my Uncle Buckshot McGee his statue. Well, I appreciate the offer very much, McGee, but on behalf of the city, no thank you. <laughs> now, if hey, you wait a minute. What do you mean, no thank you? He means he doesn't want it, dearie. Yeah, but look here. Maybe you didn't understand, Homer. This is Buckshot McGee, the great pioneer I'm talking about. He was the real McGee boy. He was the type of guy that him and his ilk built this country. Him and his brother ilks, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But much as I'd like to do this... Oh, pardon me. Uh, yes, Miss Merkel? The man is here with the cigars you ordered, Mr. Mayor. No, send him in. I appreciate your offer of the statue, McGee, but we already have a statue. In fact, the city hall lawn is loaded with statues. I'm sorry, but there's no there's more... There's cigars, Mayor. I was coming over, so... Oh, hello there, kid. Hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hi, Oldtimer. Now, look, Latrivia. My Uncle Buck was one of the founders of this great nation of ours. Yes, I'm sure he was, but... A real not. patriot. Who do you think come out to this country on a borrowed mule with a hat full of glass beads and traded the Indians out of this whole state? Let's keep my grandfather out of this. <laughs> I'm not talking about your grandfather. I'm talking about a real pioneer. That statue was a hero, boy. Statue? Yeah. How can you call yourself a true American Latrivia and refuse hey, to... Hey, speaking of statues, kids, they found one out by the highway yesterday. Yeah. Feller with a long rifle, a worried look, and four foot of ivy growing out of his ears. <laughs> yeah, 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 we know. We That's know. McGee's uncle. Nah. Now, look, McGee, I appreciate your barging in here without an appointment when my desk is loaded with work and offering to By give me By George, a... the voters ought to hear about this. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure they will, McGee. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must get to work. Oh, giving me the bum's rush, eh? Yes, I am. Well, quit pushing Matter me. of fact, I think the highway department plans to use a bulldozer on that statue this afternoon. Oh, so you... yeah. Well, we'll see about that. All I got to say, La Trivia... Is that by George, the voters of this town? Uh, don't look now, Johnny, but we're out in the hall. <laughs> Lonesome, too, isn't it? So, he wants a battle, does he? Okay, I'll give it to him, a battle. This is a fight to the finish. A fight for the honor of the American pioneer. Molly. Yes, sir. You go call the newspapers. Yes, sir. Old timer. Yes, sir. Get down to the telegraph office. Wire the governor. Wire the highway department. Wire the White House. Yes, sir. Better wire Eisenhower, too, just in case. <laughs> Molly, where's my old army uniform? Why, it's at home in the attic, but... All right, now you all know your assignments. I'll meet you at the statue. In uniform. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hold fast, Uncle Buckshot. McGee. Billy Mills in the orchestra and Arden Mella.
nice of you to drive me out here, Oli. Well, that must be the statue over there. Hmm, that's the funniest looking little hunk of yunk I ever seen. Hey, that's McGee. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong statue. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, McGee. How's it going? Oh, okay so far, kiddo. Them highway guys ain't even seen me yet. They're still eating lunch up the road there. Hi, Ole. Well, hello, McGee. So that's the statue, huh? Yeah, that's him, boy. A true pioneer. The real McGee. Mm, looks like quite a fella. Yeah. Drink a lot, did he? <laughs> Drink? Sure, he looks pretty tipsy to me. <laughs> He's tilted like the pinball game at the Elks Club, McGee. No. He was that way when I found him last fall. And if you'd have been standing in one spot for 90 years with a family of gophers living under your northeast corner, you'd tilt a little too. That's a very interesting uniform you got on there, McGee. <laughs> Which army is that? Well, that's several of them, Oli. The puttees and the coat are from the First World War. The air raid warden's helmet is from the Second World War. And the pants are from Joe's riding stables. <laughs> Well, don't worry. Them highway guys don't know I mean business. Well, the old-timer was telling at the Elks Club about it, McGee, and some of the fellas get pretty excited. Good. Old man McDonald from the bank, he says any statue of your family, they shouldn't push it over by the bulldozer. Right. He said they should blow it up with dynamite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I got news for you. Nobody's going to lay a hand on the statue while I'm here, boy. I'll fight this to the better end. If that highway crew thinks... Oh, oh, look, look, look. Oh, here they come back. Uh All right, boys, let's knock this old statue over and get it out of here. Bring the bulldozer up, Eddie. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, Pop. You folks will have to move your picnic someplace else. We're going to knock this statue down. The new highway's coming through here. Oh, yeah. Well, I got news for you, Buster. You ain't touching the statue. How is that? You tell him, McGee. This is the United States Army that you're talking to a guy in the uniform of, bud. (laughs) So just watch yourself your step. Oh, 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 got him now. I think you're looking for the Panama Canal, Pop. It's down that way, about 900 miles. Oh, is that... Oh, my goodness. Just look at that bulldozer, McGee. It's as big as a house. Well, it don't scare me, Dunn. Don't point that thing at me, Buster. Come on, beat it, Dad. We got work to do. I'll go cry a pig. You ain't knocking this statue down while I'm here. Shut it off a minute, Eddie. Now, look, mister, I don't know what this is all about, but... Well, I'll tell you what it's all about. This statue is the great Buckshot McGee, pioneer and hero. Never heard of him. Ah, he never heard of you either. (laughs) He's been dead 90 years. How long have you been dead, Buster? (laughs) Hey, you tell him, McGee. Yeah, that's Dates, where'd the crowd come from? I didn't hear it. Look, lady, any time there's a beef, crowds come out of the woodwork. (laughs) Ah, that's what we want. Wake up the public sentiment. Rouse the rabble. How about it, rabble? Are you with me? Oh, for the love of... Eddie! Eddie, run down to Harry's bar and get the superintendent. Find out if it's illegal to run over this guy with a dozer, because I don't know... (laughs) Round one. Ah, never fear, Uncle Buckshot. They shall not pass. <laughs> McGee, mother is proud of you. Standing up to that big bully. And... Uh oh! <laughs> Motorcycle. Cops? Hey, if that's the cops, McGee, I go stand with the crowd because I get a wife and kids. I ain't waiting. <laughs> hey, it's the old timer. Hi, boy. I'm glad to see you. Hello there, kids. How's the battle? Winning so far. Yeah, where'd you get the motorcycle? Borrow it off of somebody? No, I borrowed it from under somebody. Huh? <laughs> Girlfriend Bessie. Oh? She was going down Oak Street on it, and I just retched out and grabbed the back wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie was clean down to 14th Street before she noticed she wasn't riding nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but what have you been doing? Did you send the telegrams? I sure did, son. Yeah? I sent one to President Truman. Oh. White House, Washington, D.C. Here's the answer. Yeah, my gosh, give me it, give me it. Oh, my, President Truman at the White House. What does it say? It says, unknown at this address, try Blair House. Another interesting thing for your paper, bud. What's that, sir? Well, 
Uncle Buckshot McGee was the founder of Denver, Colorado. Really? He founded Denver? Yep. He was riding over the top of Pike's Peak one afternoon when he happened to look down and found Denver sitting there with half a million people in it. <laughs> are you getting this all down for your paper, bud? Am I going too fast for you? You are for me, dearie. Well, I don't want to hurry the press. I know how it is. I, I went to school with a kid one time that his dad was a newspaper man. You ever hear of a guy named Eddie Vock? Eddie Vock? Yeah, his dad writes a column. Yes, you've heard of Vox Pop, son. Oh. <laughs> Please, Molly. Please, I'll tell the anecdotes. I'm sorry. Uncle Buck was a great hero in the Civil War. Well, hello, Molly. Hello, pal. Hello Hi. there, Mr. Wilcox. I'm busy with the press, Junior. Be sure and tell your readers, Bud, that the Pioneer McGee blood flows through my veins. Yes, sir. Hope you don't get any of it on you. <laughs> hey, uh, this is quite a thing you've got going here, pal. This the statue? Who is it? Who is it? Look, Junior, you can read all about it in the paper. This is a reporter right here. Well, I'm not a reporter, sir. Huh? You said you were working on a paper. Oh, I am. A paper for my psychology exam. <laughs> I'm calling it Oddballs I've Met. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This'll get me an A. <laughs> Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, my friends, gaze at this noble statue here, this bronze likeness of one of Wistful Vista's early pioneers. Pour it on, Junior. Yeah, you tell him, Junior. <laughs> there, my friends, was a man who helped to build this nation, a nation where we are free to live as we choose. Yes, a land where it is the right of every man to eat his favorite foods, delicious, nourishing foods prepared with pet evaporated milk. Hey, how the Sam Hill did he get way over there? Well, doesn't he always, Ollie? I say to you, my friends, that when your wife prepares your favorite dishes with pet milk, she's not only giving you added taste and yes. added enjoyment, yes. but she's giving you an added helping of health. Junior, the statue, Hilo, the statue, Hilo, oh, the statue. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, look at that statue, my friend. That's it. Look at those piercing eyes, that lean and hungry look. Oh. And what is he hungry for? Oh. For meat and vegetable dishes, for rich, creamy, smooth gravy, oh. for delicious cream pies made with pet milk. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, for the love of pet. <laughs> Because pet milk, which is just good, sweet country milk evaporated to double richness, is not only good, it's good for you. Not only that, oh, but when you right, cook your food... All right, break it up, break it up. Oh, hey, now, please, dearie. There's a guy, there's a guy right over there, officer, holding up construction, tying up the new highway. Oh, yeah, well, go build your highway someplace else. You ain't going to build it through here. That's the way you're right here, my George. Now, look at here, wise guy. Are you going to come along quietly? Don't you reach for me. Take your hands off of him, you big Logan. Now, look, lady. I got orders from the mayor to bust this up. Oh, the mayor, eh? All right, Flatfoot. Just one question. What is it? You're a city cop, ain't you? Yes. So, do you happen to know where the city limits line is? Certainly. Yeah. It's right down toward town there, about a hundred yards. And... Uh, Whoops. Uh, <laughs> Aha! To Hoosh Wonderful. <laughs> you can't arrest you out here, dearie. Now beat it, stupid. Go soak your head. <laughs> that goes for your big fat mayor, too. <laughs> The King's Man and Little David play on your harp. Oh, little David, 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 little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah, little David, play on your harp. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, Told Moses, oh Lord, go down into Egypt, oh Lord, tell of Pharaoh, tell of Pharaoh. Set my people free, set my people free, set my people free. 
There was a pillar of cloud by day And a pillar of fire by night And Moses led the way From the land of Egypt they took flight Now Pharaoh took his army and the chariots rolled He caught up with the children when alone behold the wind came a blowing, Lordy, how it blew. The water separated and the children went through. Pharaoh tried to catch him on the farther shore, but the water came together with a mighty roar. Moses and the children, they were safe and free, but Pharaoh drowned. Pharaoh drowned in the big Red Sea. Play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah, little David. Play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah, little David. Play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah, little David. Play on your magic golden harp. Oh, little David, little, 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 little David. The little guy is a sculptor, and he made the statue to sell it. No, no, that isn't it at all. It's an Indian statue from a temple, and it has ruby eyes in it. Yeah? My husband listens to all the crime shows, and he recognized it from a description. Yeah, really? Mm, certainly. He says the man there belongs to a gang of jewel thieves. I'm sorry, uh, lady, but I happen to know the man personally, and you're wrong. <laughs> Who asked you? <laughs> yeah, you you know the guy? Oh, very well. His name is McGee, and his wife's name is Molly. I've never met the statue, but I think it's... Boy, oh boy, half the town is out here, Molly. Well, how am I doing, Doc? Got him going, haven't I? Mm, quite a crowd, Dr. Gamble. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I wish you could have seen the mayor when I left him, Molly. Yeah? He was trying to decide whether to have McGee shot or just take the easy way and leap off the city hall. <laughs> well, he don't have to do either. All he's got to do is take this statue of Uncle Buckshot McGee and put it on the city hall lawn where a hero belongs. That's all he's got to do. Hmm. So that's your Uncle Buck, is it? That's him, Doctor. Ah, dear old Uncle Buckshot. He was the real McGee. Well, he does have the McGee head all right. Yeah. Big? No, hard. <laughs> what does it say on the statue there? Uh, Buckshot McGee, erected by the men of his regiment. Yes, and I'm going to clean the rest of that moss off of it, McGee. Uh, there's more engraving on yeah, it. Yeah, we are. Where is it? Ah, there you are. Now look here, McGee. You, you, I ought to... Now, now, take it easy, Latrivia. You'll bust something. <laughs> McGee, this is the end. This is the most ridiculous thing you've ever done. Well, now, why are you getting... Uh, that's the mayor. He's a personal friend of mine. No, he don't even know you. He does, too. Hello, mayor. Hello there. Shut up, Wallace. There, you see? <laughs> McGee, this is outrageous. The governor's calling me. The highway department is in a turmoil. Well, you got it coming. I, I... Look, look. You take the statue. Huh? I've talked to the highway department. Yeah? They're going to deliver it to your house for you. Oh. Set it up in your front yard. Now, how's that? My own yard. Hey, how about that, Molly? Well, uh, uh, dearie, I cleaned up the lettering. Yeah, you hear that, folks? This statue of my great pioneer, Uncle Buckshot McGee, the great Civil War hero, is going up in the front yard of our ancestral home at 79 Wistful Vista. Yeah, how about that? Now, now, if you'll just send this crowd home and let the highway department get back to work... You folks can come by there any time you want to and admire it for a very nominal fee. <laughs> McGee, I think you ought now to... Now, gather around now, folks, and we'll read the record of this great hero's exploits. My own Uncle Buckshot McGee. A true McGee. Let's see, what does it say there? This statue erected by the men of the 43rd Volunteers. McGee, I... As an example, so the world may never forget the memory of Buckshot McGee. Sounds like a real hero. But McGee... Quiet, Mom. Uh... Who joined his regiment... 
with but one purpose in mind. Dearie, please. One purpose in mind, to steal their horses. Huh? I tried to tell you. Read the rest of it. <laughs> Born in 1831, hung in 1864. <laughs> A real McGee. Molly, return in a moment. Women are wonderful, aren't they? A man might go into a store and get confused by all the different brands there are to choose from, but not a woman. When it's milk she wants, for instance, without hesitating, she reaches for pet evaporated milk. She knows by experience that no brand of milk, no brand, is better than pet milk. Why, it's pet milk that helps her youngsters grow strong and sturdy. It's pet milk that helps her make so many of the delicious foods her husband and youngsters enjoy so much. The good meat and vegetable dishes, the wonderful scalloped potatoes, the good creamy, smooth gravy and sauces, the delicious cream pies, and dozens of other family favorites. Yes, a woman knows that pet evaporated milk isn't a milk substitute. It's good sweet country milk concentrated to double richness by evaporation. And because one cup of pet milk makes two cups of rich whole milk just by adding water, she knows she's getting more for her money when she gets pet. So... You men who help with the family food shopping, take a tip from your wives. And when that shopping list says milk, don't take any chances. Reach for pet evaporated milk. Gee, Molly, how how can I ever face people again? Now, now, don't you fret. My own uncle, a horse thief. Well, it isn't your fault. Besides, everybody thought it was very nice when you donated his statue to the scrap drive, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. The government can use that. Yeah, there must be about a ton of bronze in that thing at that. Of course. Yeah. So you see, Uncle Buck did turn out to be a patriot after all, even if they do have to melt him down to get it. (laughs) I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yes. Hmm? He what? Concrete? With bronze paint on it? Oh. Oh. Who was it, kiddo? Nothing. Skip it. Good night. Good night, all. The first evaporated milk, pet milk, brings you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? If you've ever moved from a friendly, pleasant street to a strange new neighborhood, you'll understand the regrets young wife Sally Carter experiences now that the Carters are about to leave Blackberry Lane. How Sally resolves the problems of the old versus the new is told in the story of the week on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning. The second big feature is Mary Lee Taylor's recipe of the week for olive and tuna super supper, a brand new one-dish dinner that tastes mighty good. Don't miss Pet Milk's big double feature Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning on NBC. The preceding program was transcribed. Now, Eddie Cantor presents show business on NBC.